Ah, oh, look at that. Fantastic goal. Hi gamers, Pedro here uh, and welcome to this, the second episode uh, of our Football Manager series. Um, today we're going to be looking uh, a little bit at the uh, transfer market, we're going to be looking at scouts, um, some of our affiliate clubs uh, and then maybe we'll, we'll have a little look at um, uh, getting through a couple more of these, these friendlies. Um, just to recap on the previous episode, if you did see it, thank you very much uh, to all of those that, that saw the video uh, and liked it. Uh, it really does that does mean a lot. Um, but just to recap on the previous episode, uh, we looked at getting started, we looked at creating our, our own manager, uh, we also looked at tactics and then we had our, our very first friendly, which uh, as you remember, um, we uh, beat our under 23 team uh, 1-0. Uh, so we're looking to, to build on that um, in this episode. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about uh, in this episode is just uh, I want to have a little look at our scouting team. Obviously this is pre-season, uh, we are looking at um, the 2nd of July at the minute, obviously the season starts um, sort of right at the start of, um, of August. Uh, so we want to look at um, perhaps getting in a few new additions that, that are going to help uh, our team uh, climb up the table this season. Um, now if you um, uh, just look at the uh, the staff menu here. Uh, you can see that, that currently uh, we only have one scout. Um, so I'm going to have a little look at our scouting and transfers team, uh, and we can see who that is. So we've got um, Keith Burt, uh, who is our director of football. Uh, we're going to have a little look at his attributes, and I'm going to highlight um, some of the things that, that are key um, when you're looking at, at a scout uh, in particular. And this this guy is obviously a director of football. Um, but I'll just use them as an example um, to start us off. So uh, with, a, um, with a scout, a couple of the, first of all, the key uh, attributes that you want to be looking at. You want to be looking at this uh, judging player ability uh, and obviously judging player potential. You want these numbers here um, to be as high as possible, really. This, um, this guy, Keith Burt, his uh, judging player ability is 14, his player potential is 9. Uh, so it means he's going to uh, have a better overview uh, to the current level that the players are working at at the moment um, but obviously with potential um, yeah he's not going to be as good at, at spotting some of the uh, perhaps the young guns that, that are going to develop into um, into top footballers. Now another uh, important attribute that people often miss actually uh, is this one here which is adaptability. Um, now adaptability what, what that means is um, is the uh, level at which your scout can uh, can adapt uh, particularly when he's um, sort of scouting uh, teams abroad or, or looking for players that, that are not based in in the country that your team is uh, so if you're um, perhaps a sort of um, you know league one championship team in, in England uh, and you're looking at a sort of further afield maybe sort of scouting a few players in Europe uh, see if you can pick up some uh, some bargains and some top quality players uh, you're going to want that adaptability to be pretty high as well just means it's going to be a lot quicker a lot smoother um, process when when your um, scout is uh, is looking at yeah players that, that are based based abroad okay so in a second uh, I'm going to look at uh, signing uh, our first um, first scout but just to um, take you to the uh, the scouting screen first of all uh, it's important just to look at the, the world knowledge so uh, at Gillingham Football Club we've just got the one uh, director of football um, and you can see that the minute our world knowledge is, is 3% and very much uh, sort of focused uh, around the UK and Ireland uh, so perhaps when we're looking at scouts we might want to um, just look to, to see is there any scouts that have uh, yeah, is there any scouts that have knowledge of some of the other markets, perhaps in, in Spain, Italy, uh, France, some of the markets that, that are quite close to us that produce some quality footballers. Um, so yeah, something to, to bear in mind when you are looking at a scout. Okay, so I'm just on the uh, staff search screen. Uh, and I'm looking at, at hiring a, a chief scout first of all and you can see that uh, I've used this drop down here and sort of selected just a few uh, attributes um, that we're going to be looking for um, in our chief scout. So the first thing uh, I've looked at is adaptability and I've just set this at 12 which is a sort of um, a bit of a middle ground really with um, sort of some chief scouts um, and also judging player ability I've set at, um, at 12 as well. Player potential I've set at 13. I really like to sign some um, some sort of young guns that are going to develop into um, into better players. Um, so you can see it gives us four different options. Now we've got a couple of um, a couple of scouts here. First of all, that are um, already attached to uh, a couple of clubs. So just bear in mind that you will have to uh, obviously pay those clubs some compensation if you do look to um, do look to sign those. 
Uh, so I'm going to be looking at this, um, these two. So you've got Pat Holland and Alan uh, Jamil. Uh, I'm going to be looking at these first of all. So if we click on um, uh, Alan Jamil, we can see that yeah, his ratings, he's got adaptability is 13, judging player, player ability is 13, judging player potential is 13. So it's going to be a good addition to, to our club. Uh, looking at his scouting knowledge, he's got good uh, knowledge of Scotland and good knowledge of England. Um, so particularly Scotland is an area that, that we don't actually have um, much knowledge of. So I can see that first of all, uh, Alan Jamil uh, is going to be a great addition. So I, I'm going to look to um, to make this guy an offer um, and hopefully uh, try and sign him. Now I always think it's it's important to start looking at scouts uh, and your um, your staff uh, before you start looking at, at players because you want to be wanting to uh, to scout the players that you're going to look to sign uh, just to make sure um, that they are uh, compatible with your team and that they're going to fit in. Um, we're going to look at that in, in a few moments um, but yeah scouting is a really vital part of this game if you're going to be successful uh, in, in the players that you sign if you're going to bring the right players to the club um, then obviously without a doubt scouting is going to be hugely uh, hugely important in that. Okay, so as you can see, we successfully uh, managed to sign uh, Alan Jamil as our chief scout. Um, and uh, one of the things that you will notice whenever you sign a scout is they come, uh, when they start with you, they, um, uh, they make a few recommendations uh, on players that are going to improve uh, improve the team. So, so what I'd like to do is just have a good look at those. Um, they, they sort of give you a report as well of the player. Um, I'd like to have a good look at those, look at their current ability uh, and their potential ability. And, and anyone that, uh, that I think is going to, um, improve the squad. Uh, I'll certainly sort of add them to the to the shortlist. So this guy here is um, is available on a free transfer. Uh, our transfer budget is fifty thousand, so we really can't afford um, the other two players. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add this guy to the um, to the shortlist, uh, and then um, yeah, we'll have a closer look at him perhaps on another time. Okay, so I'm now going to have a little look at signing our first player. Um, now, uh, you will find uh, that sort of player search are located under the scouting tab. Um, and uh, yeah, one of the things that's here, it's important to, to look at uh, right at the start of a first save is obviously this is a third of July at the moment, still very early on in the game. Uh, and you're going to see loads of people um, that are on, uh, that, that have contracts that have expired. Um, now some some really great players uh, you'll find uh, sort of right at the start of um, of every season, um, and these can be players that you know we've got people like Emil Heskey there, so an international, previous international. Uh, obviously he's getting on a bit now, so he's 38. Um, but if you're like a League Two, League One club, maybe even a Championship club, you're going to find some some great players um, that are, are sort of real uh, real bargains. Um, so yeah, so uh, first of all, I'm just going to look at some of the people that. Uh, with contracts that are expired, you can see just over here, a transfer budget's not much. Um, we've got a bit of wage budget to play around with, um, but I uh, certainly can't be splashing cash on sort of big marquee signings. Uh, now, uh, if you watch the first episode, uh, you will remember that on our team report, um, our assistant manager highlighted the fact that, that our team had a little bit of a leadership void. Um, so what I have done here is just using the filters, uh, is I've looked at people that uh, contracts are expired, and I've also looked at um, those with a leadership of at least 12 just to try and get um, a bit more leadership in there. Uh, now I know from experience that uh, Gillingham's defence um, could do with a little bit of shoring up at the moment. Um, so uh, one of the players that has really caught my eye is Anthony Gerrard. Now Anthony Gerrard is, um, I think he's a cousin of Stephen Gerrard, um, but he's a uh, defensive um, centre back and uh, 30 years old, so he's not too old, he's still going to be um, good for a few years yet and I think that, that this season, uh, if we can sign him, he's going to be really good. Now one of the things that, that has already happened is our scout has already taken a look at him, already has a, a, an understanding of him. Um, so this is good to, to see uh, sort of where the, this player is going to fit into our team. Uh, you've got some of his pros uh, here, so the, uh, yeah, he's interested in joining our club. Um, we've got a determined group of players and Gerald would fit in well. He's very brave uh, and shows a fairly ambitious nature. He's also good in the air. Um, some of his cons is that uh, he can only play in one position. Not really much of a big deal for a defensive centre back. Um, and he lacks natural fitness, um, which is reflected by Lafarge, uh, Lafarge in his game. Uh, he's also a fairly slow player. Now I'm going to um, sort of probably overlook those things 
it's, it's important to be realistic. We are gelling and we're not Barcelona. Um, so yeah, the, every player is going to come with a, with a few cons. Now this is good to, to see where he's going to fit into our team. Now this is saying he's going to be our fourth um, best um, central defender. Um, which you know ideally would like to sign players that were better than the rest um, however i do think this leadership ability um is going to be uh yeah is going to is going to help out and also it's important to note that, that our judging ability and potential is not um sort of the highest so those stats could be wrong it could be that he's further down or it could be that he's a little bit higher up um so i'm gonna i'm gonna take a punt on on anthony gerard uh, and i'm gonna look at to see if we can if we can sign him so I'm going to go over to the uh, contract section here and uh, look at approach to sign and it's going to bring up the um, our contract offer for, uh, for Antin Gerard. Now he's, on, um, he's looking for a wage of uh, £2.7 um, pounds per week, sounds an awful lot of money, um, but we can look at it uh, sort of down at the bottom here and um, we can sort of see some of the wage budget and we can see if we can, um, if we can afford it um, uh, and so on and so forth. Now one of the things I do like to keep an eye on as well is just this signing on fee and agent fee. I like to try and uh, sort of keep that uh, a little bit low because yeah, that that sort of stuff is going to come out of your budget as well. Um, also, there's a there is another thing that I normally like to look at here: things like the appearance fee, clean sheet bonuses. Just trying to take those down a little bit um, uh, and sort of nego uh, in our negotiations with um, with our players. Um, so yes, yeah, so let's take those and I'm going to try and I'm going to be a bit cheeky and see if we can sort of half that those fees here. Um, let's put that up to 2,000. Now one of the things you can do if you're not negotiable on them, you can use this little lock key uh, and that will highlight the fact that you, that can't be changed actually. So when the player comes back to you, you're saying I'm not budging on these. Um, all of the other areas of the, the contracts are up for negotiation but not those. I'm just going to take these down a little bit as well, not too much because um, you know, we don't want him to run away. take his uh, wage down a little bit uh, sort of aim that for 2000 this is all important actually if you're trying to keep to um, to a budget trying to get the players sort of as um, as cheap as possible is always good so disappointing it starts the negotiations um, see obviously I just don't want to take it down quite as much this time um, otherwise he is gonna is gonna run away and I don't want him to Let's have a look. we aren't too far apart at the moment so it seems like we're quite close so let's just take it down a little bit more There we go. This deal works for us. We we'll take our time to consider everything uh, and then get back to you. If you see that, the player's almost certainly going to sign with you. Um, so it's hit finalised deal um, and then he'll get back to us in a, in a couple of days. Okay, guys, so while we're waiting to see if, um, if Anthony Gerard is going to sign uh, for us, um, I just wanted to show you uh, the affiliate clubs um, and some of the uh, clubs that you can link with and the advantages of that. So you find your, your club affiliate um, just in this club tab. Uh, and then you've got affiliates just at the top here and you go to affiliate clubs uh, so you can see uh, Gillingham uh, at the moment we don't have um, any affiliated clubs um, as part of us now uh, to give you an overview of uh, some of the benefits of uh, affiliate clubs uh, there's several different types so you can look for a feeder club uh, a feed club is a club uh, that's um, of a smaller stature of you uh, of your club uh, and what you can do is you can send um, some of your players on loan there so they can gain sort of first team experience now if you do look for a feeder club and uh, normally you do have to pay them a fee um, one of the other things uh, or one of the other advantages is that, that quite often you can get sort of first options on some of the players that they've got so if they have any good players coming up um, actually you'll get first options uh, on buying them um, uh, another advantage as well um, with with affiliate clubs uh, is the uh, scout and player knowledge so if there's a, an affiliate club uh, or a club that you're affiliated with uh, actually you get access to all of their scouting knowledge as well so if you uh, are looking for a senior affiliate or a parent parent club um, actually you're going to get access to um, to their scouting database so if they are a big club uh, let's say for instance Man United they obviously scout all over the world um, that's really going to boost um, your player um, uh, sort of your player knowledge and the players that are, are available to you or that the scouts are aware of um, so it's definitely worthwhile looking at that now uh, if you do get a parent club um, now this is only really going to work uh, if you're in sort of league one league two championship or one of the lower leagues um, but if you do get a parent club you also uh, have the opportunity to not only gain income from um, uh, from the the parent club paying you a, a, an annual fee um, but also you can um, yeah, get their, get some of their players on loan. So if they've got some um, 
some bright young guns, they can send them to your team on loan and that can really make or break the season um, for some of these lower lower league clubs. Um, being able to get some players in on loan can really uh, sort of boost your team without um, it costing you an absolute fortune. So it's, it's worthwhile to, to do. Now, another save of um, Football Manager 17, I uh, started off with Cardiff Met University. Um, now they had about 100 to 200 people attending their games, very, very small budget. Uh, I managed to uh, get um, a link up with um, with Cardiff City uh, Football Club uh, and they were providing us about £80,000 a, a year uh, as a fee. So I totally sort of doubled the amount that the club was getting. Uh, and obviously I had some of their um, some of their youth players um, that signed um, with us on, on a loan deal. So it um, so really did help boost um, boost that team. So it's definitely worth a, worth a look. Now um, for Gillingham here, I'm going to look at uh, a senior a senior affiliate. So if you don't have any affiliated clubs, um, you can just click this button here and look for a senior affiliate. Um, and then it'll take you into a discussion with the chairman. Um, so I'm going to say we look uh, we should seek an affiliation with a suitable club that will enable us to sign good players on loan without the cost of their wages. Um, that's the main thing that I want to do. Um, to be honest, just to boost our boost our squad without paying for their wages. So let's see what our chairman says. There we go, nice and easy, he said yes straight away. So he says, we agree that such an affiliation will allow us to sign better players on loan for little cost. That concludes this meeting, you know where to find us if you want to talk about anything else. Certainly do, Mr Scully. So there we go, so he's going to now begin a search um, for a senior affiliate. Um, it can take about a month or so for him to get back to us and normally they'll give us three different options um, and we'll be able to pick one um, one of those. I'm also going to look for an affiliate club, so this is going to be uh, a club that we can send some of our players out on to loan with. Um, so yeah, let's pick the first option here. We looked at new affiliate club to enable us to send players out on loan. Um, here we go. We believe that this can be done without needing to create an official partnership. Therefore, we're going to have to reject your request. Um, you'll see some of the requests get rejected by the chairman. A um, couple of things you can do. Um, just be careful not to click the one that says, if you don't grant this request, I'm not sure I'll be able to carry on my job. It's a bit, um, yeah, it's a bit sort of desperate situation to get booted out pretty quickly if you do that. Um, but uh, let's go for if this request isn't granted, you're going to see your club being left. Um, behind by our rivals. There we go, so it's managed to con change his mind um, and convince him this is important. So he's going to come back to us, uh, hopefully with some suggestions, uh, again in about a month's time. Okay, so still currently waiting for, for Anti Anthony Gerrard to sign. Um, we've got our next um, friendly game with Morecambe. Um, so we're playing Morecambe in our second friendly. It's hopefully a little bit of a better result than, than what we got um, in the very first friendly. Um, so I'm going to stick with the same formation. You will see that familiarity looks getting a little bit better from last time. Um, so it's definitely something that we want to uh, try and improve before the start of the season. So let's just go on and let's see how we do against Morecambe. Oh no, look, we're 1-0 down, what an absolute disaster. Okay, so it's half time in our um, in our Morecambe friendly. We are 1-0 down at the moment. Um, I would have expected us uh, to, to be leading this match uh, and certainly winning this match overall. Um, so I'm going to um, yeah try and encourage the team first of all. Um, so I'm just say I expect to see a much better showing from you in the second half and that's motivated a few uh, a few players. Uh, and then I'm also just going to go on and um, do something similar um, to the defenders. So I'm looking for you to make a difference for us and I know you're capable. There we go, it seems to work quite well. So say the same thing to midfielders and strikers as well. Here we go, so the team's been uh, motivated a little bit, so hopefully that will help improve their performance for the second half. Uh, one of the things I'm also going to look at though is just to change some of these instructions a little bit because it does seem like we're, we're, we're struggling. Um, so perhaps play over a little bit of a, a slower um, slower tempo. Um, I'm also going to take the play out of defence um, off because it does seem that we're, um, we're struggling. Um, look to clear the ball to the flanks, try and get the ball up. Um, up to the top half of the pitch a little bit quicker. We're really sort of struggling um, that way now. I'm also going to go for more direct passing. Obviously, we're, we're chasing the game, so let's see if we can get the ball um, up to these strikers and see, if, see what they can do. Ah, oh, look at that. Fantastic goal. There we go, right back into it. Within two minutes, Billy Knott steps up and pops in. An absolute cracker. Let's take another look at that. Outside the box, left foot top corner pick that out oh we've got a penalty chance to take the lead here 
If it's a penalty taker, I've not set it. Oh no. Oh, it's Donnelly. He's our striker. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, it's another penalty. The good news is I subbed the striker off, so we got a different penalty taker this time. Who have we got? Who have we got here? Billy Knight, he's already scored. And he scores again, that's his second. And we take the lead, look at that, 2-1, this is better. Okay, so look at that, look, we won 2-1, and uh, what a great result, hey? We were losing 1-0 uh, at half-time, a couple of changes, uh, and then the team have responded uh, fantastically. So Billy Knight with a couple of goals there as well. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I think he's going to be great this season. Um, so that's it for this week. If you have enjoyed this episode, uh, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, in the boxes below, really does does mean a lot. And uh, you may have noticed as well, I have started uh, another series looking at Planet Coaster, um, one of the new uh, theme park building uh, building games. So if you uh, have got an interest in that or you want to check it out, um, there will be a link in the description box below. Um, so so yeah, do make sure that you uh, take a look at that. Uh, but that's it for this week. Um, next week we're going to be looking at um, the training element of Football Manager a little bit more, looking at um, sort of how we can train our team better um, and seeing what effect that has on the players. And um, yeah, so make sure that you tune in next week and check it out. Um, but that's it for this week. Have a fantastic week uh, and we'll see you next time.